All right, so if you watched the previous video, you heard me talk about this change of base rule. It says that the log of any base B of A is equal to log base C of A divided by log base C of B. So really what this is saying is that log base 5 of 7 is equal to the log base whatever I want of 7, usually it's a common log or natural log, divided by log base whatever I want of 5. And if you're really interested in this old-fashioned mathematics, cool, look it up, investigate yourself, but I'm moving on. Pretty unimportant to the big picture. So we're going to talk about graphing logs today. And logs and Exponential equations are inverses of each other, remember. We've talked about this. We've looked at this. So remember exponential functions. We looked at those previously. Um, the domain is a set of x's such that x is an element of the reals. And the range is the set of all y's such that y is greater than 0, and they have horizontal asymptote at 0. Well, domain and range flip-flop for, for inverses. So the domain of a logarithm equation becomes a set of all x's such that x is greater than 0. The range is the set of all y's such that y is an element of the reals. And instead of having a horizontal asymptote, we have a vertical asymptote. Graphically, inverses are a reflection across the line y equals x. So if I have a to the x, where a is a fraction, so we have exponential decay. If I reflect all of these points across this mirror line, right here, a1 becomes 1 comma a, so on and so on. Um, same deal here. We reflect directly across the line y equals x. So Graphing exponential functions is really easy. Um, what I would say is graph the exponential function and then just do a reflection to get the logarithm graph. So here we go. Um, I want to graph the equation log base 2 of x minus 1 plus 1. I mean, ew, gross. I need the domain and range. I need the asymptotes, axes, intercepts. Sketching the graph and find f inverse. Um, I'm going to start with that, guys. So if we say that y is equal to this thing, to find the inverse, we change x and y. And now I'm going to solve for y. So I subtract 1 from both sides. The logarithm is alone. Now I change to exponential form. And then adding 1 to both sides, we get the inverse equation is equal to 2 to the x minus 1 plus 1. So it's an exponential problem. Um, this is easy enough to graph. I'm going to start by just looking at 2 to the x. Remember this minus 1 and this plus 1, that's just shifting this 2 to the x. I'm going to start by looking at that. When x is 0 y is equal to 1. When x is 1, y is equal to 2. I'm just plugging those things in. So my graph would go through these. It would have a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. But wait, I need to shift it up 1. I need to shift everything up 1 here. So I'm going to graph my horizontal asymptote up 1 unit. Bam. Um, my points, they need to move up 1. But they also have to move right one, up one. So this point has become here. This point is here. And my graph for f inverse becomes this. Now, great. That's the graph of the inverse. How does that help me graph? f of x, this logarithm. Mm, man. Remember, the points just flip-flop their domain and range, their x and their y. 
And my horizontal asymptote becomes a vertical one. Isn't that nice, guys? So my vertical asymptote for the log would be x equals 1. Um, this point right here that was on the graph, 1 comma 2 becomes 2 comma 1. This point here, 2 comma 4 becomes 4 comma 2. Right there is my logarithm graph. Notice there is no y-intercept. It doesn't get to the y-axis in this problem. Um, so the asymptote is x equals 1. No y-intercept. And x-intercept. Oh, how do we find the x-intercept? Oh, we plug in 0 for x. And in this particular case, it's not that nice of a number. We get log base 2, negative 1. Oh, that's right. That's finding the y-intercept. We want this equal to 0. Where do, when does this become 0? So 0 equals log base 2 of x minus 1 plus 1. And we can solve this for x. It's going to be... 2 to some power, and plus 1, minus 1, yada, yada. I mean, that's not a nice x-intercept. We could find it if we want to. I'm going to leave that for you. How would we verify that this, right here, is the inverse of that? I think we've talked about that in one of the very early sections but explain how to verify, we need to do a function composition and show that that equals x and we show that the composition the other way is also equal to x. If those things are both equal to x, we have verified the inverses. So, Notice I didn't go through A through D in that order. I find it much easier, if I'm graphing by hand, to graph a power function, a simple power function, then shift it, and then switch the domain range. And that's one thing I forgot to write down, isn't it? Domain. The set of all x is such that x is greater than what? What value are the, all the x's greater than? 1, in this case. The range. The set of y's such that y is an element of all real numbers. Um, next video, second video in this series, is going to be another example.